بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اما بعد احببت في الله continue on our study of riyad salihin by imam nawawi rahimahullah ta'ala the book of praise and gratitude we mentioned the ayat uh, in the kitab hamdu alhamdulillah ta'ala wa shukrihi uh, bab wujub al shukr the obligation of gratitude, the book of praise and gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we already mentioned those ayat that Imam Anawi mentioned from the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For example, the verse that he began with, <coughs> well, or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al-Kareem, فَذْكُرْنِي أَذْكُرُكُمْ وَاشْكُرُوا لِي وَلَا تَكْفُرُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al-Kareem, Therefore remember me, I will remember and be great, uh, and I will remember you and be grateful to me and never be ungrateful to me. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us to make dhikr, commands us to remember him often. And he gives us, uh, it's also in the imperative form that he commands us to be thankful. And do not become ungrateful. So Allah has commanded us with dhikr and commanded us with shukr, with being thankful and grateful to him. And prohibited us from being ungrateful. And any time we have a command in the Quran and in the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the origin of that command is that it is a an obligation. So the ulama of fiqh and the ulama they say that Al Amr Yufid al Wujub that the origin of a command is that it is evidence that something is an obligation. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us to uh, remember him often, then that's a command. That means it's an obligation. That means failing to do so is a sin. And when he orders us subhanahu to be thankful or grateful to him, then of course that's a command. That means it's an obligation. And to not be ungrateful to show ingratitude, that is all, that's a prohibition from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Have a dalil, ala tahreem, have a fi'l. That is evidence that that action of ingratitude is disobedience to Allah and meaning it's impermissible. It is haram. And from the benefits of those verses, the verse we just mentioned and the other verses that Imam uh, Anawi mentioned in this chapter, Some of the benefits a dhikr nafi' lil abd huwa dhikr al qalb wa a'dhamuhu ma ishtaraka fihi al qalb wa lisan. The, the first uh, benefit that we gain from these verses is it illustrates for us that dhikr or remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is beneficial for the servant, meaning it's beneficial for you and I. And the most beneficial of that. Dhikr is the dhikr of the heart. And the greatest of that, the greatest type of dhikr, meaning, is that which is shared in the heart and the lisan and the tongue. So when you are grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you praise Him on your tongue, you're grateful inwardly and outwardly on your tongue, then this is the, the greatest way of making dhikr. And the greatest way of illustrating your gratitude for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And of course, when doing actions on the limbs. And another benefit, dhikr Allah ta'ala huwa kullu ta'atu qarrib Allah min, iba- min ibadah. O amr bi ma'roof, o nahiyan al-munkar, o ta'alam al-ilm, o tafakkir, o muhasaba, o dhikr bi lisan. Fukulu dhalika min dhikr illahi ta'ala. This is a beautiful uh, another benefit from these verses is that remembering Allah the Almighty, it is every type or every action or every type of obedience which brings you closer to Allah from any and all types of ibadah, all types of worship, or amr bi ma'ruf, which is a type of worship, commanding the good or forbidding the evil. Or seeking knowledge, ta'alam al-ilm, 
seeking knowledge, o tefikir, o thinking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's creation and contemplating, or to account, hold yourself accountable. All of these are types of, of, of ways of ibadah, and they all are a part of dhikr because they all revolve around worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Or remembering Allah with your tongue by praising Him. Alhamdulillah, subhanallah, Allahu Akbar. All of those things are dhikr on the lisan, dhikr on the tongue. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. All of those are ways in which we remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of that is from dhikr Allah. And from other benefits obtained from these, uh, two benefits from shukr, from having shukr. Uh, these two great benefits are first al-i'tiraf bi'ibuditi lillah ta'ala wa ada ba'd al that the first benefit of having shukr is that it is an acknowledgement of that Allah is the only one worthy of worship that we have to have obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in humility before him the Almighty Subhana, and that it will encourage us to give the haq of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. And what's the haq? Is that we worship Him and Him alone, as it came in the Hadith of Muadh bin Jabal radiAllahu taala anhu, who said, "Kuntu radif Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam ala himar, fakala li ya Muadh tadri ma haq Allah li badi wa ma haq li badi Allah. Kuntu Allah wa Rasulu alam. Kala haq Allah li badi ya abdu wa la yushriku bi shayin. Wa haq li badi Allah la yuadhib min la yushriku bi shayin." Uh, Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiallahu ta'ala anhu, and this illustrates for us the purpose of mentioning this hadith, is it shows us the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, Mu'adh was on a, a, a donkey with the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked Mu'adh radiallahu ta'ala anhu about the right of Allah. He said, oh Mu'adh, do you know the right of Allah and the right of the servant upon Allah? And then Mu'adh radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he responded, he said, Allah and his messenger know best. And then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that the right of Allah upon his servant is that he worships him and him alone and he does not associate any partners with him. And the right of the servant upon Allah is that Allah will not punish him if he does all of this worship perfectly to Allah. So that shows us what? That ibadah is an obligation. Ibadah khalis lillah, meaning uh, sincere ibadah to Allah. And that is the only way that it accept, it's accepted. And that that ibadah is the right of Allah. As the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said. The second benefit from, the, uh, from shukr. So this, we, we, we get this acknowledgement, we understand this, uh, these are benefits, great benefits from shukr, from having gratefulness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second one is that the reason that a person is increased in blessings is from their, their thankfulness. So thankfulness is a way and by being continually thankful and continually making remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, these are ways in which you can continually receive the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is a means for rizq. Dhikr is a means for rizq. So try to increase your dhikr. This is a reminder to myself and my brothers and sisters to remember Allah often on your tongue. Try to, uh, just when you're walking, you're walking to your job, you're walking to school, you're walking wherever you are, you're running, you're jogging, you're exercising, whatever. Try to make your, your, your tongue moist with dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal. And this will help increase the reward, the blessings that Allah has bestowed upon you. Allah has already bestowed many blessings on us, and Allah will increase the blessings, bi'idnillah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the means for having it, have it done. Another benefit from this, from uh, uh, shukr, from having gratefulness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and these verses that were mentioned is that these verses illustrate and encourage us to be 
constantly striving to appraise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala under all circumstances. Fi sara'i wa dara'i. Fa huwa subhanahu mahmud fi ibtida'i al-khalq wa anzal al-shar' wa istimrar al-khalq wa intaha al-khalq wa kana min hadiyya nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam hamidullah ala kulli hal. In asabatuhu sara' qal alhamdulillah aladhi bi ni'matihi tatamma salihat. Wa in asabatuhu dara' qal alhamdulillah ala kulli hal. So, these verses also illustrate for us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Almighty, should be praised under all circumstances in when we have difficulty and when we have ease through happiness and sadness. And He, the Almighty, is the one worthy of all praise from His creating of the creation to His uh, revealing the Sharia for all his prophets, alayhim afdal salatu wa salam, and for the blessing of the creation to be continual, meaning that we continue, continually exist, we live and we die, but we have enjoyment and we have all those benefits in this life, and bi'idhnillah, if we are grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and are obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and die upon tawheed, then we'll have the, uh, that will be the reward of that gratefulness in this dunya. As the Salaf used to say, uh, about uh, the dunya and the akhirah, they used to say uh, a dunya uh, darul darul amal wal akhirah dar jaza that this life, this worldly life is the time for deeds and the next life, the hereafter is the time for reward so that's when you'll reap what you sowed, so, so to speak. You will reap the fruits of your labor in the hereafter, also in the dunya, also in this life. When you do good, you feel better. When you do good, you find blessings and, 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 and great reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even in this life. But in the hereafter is really when you will get uh, your recompense, either good or bad, depending on uh, what you were doing in this life. And may Allah bless us with uh, khair, ameen. And so from the hadith or the guidance of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is that he used to praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala under all circumstances. If something, diff, if great, uh, something great and that made him happy uh, happened to him, he would say, all praise belongs to Allah, the one who completed his favor, uh, uh, his one who completed his favor and his, his uh, righteousness upon his servants. And if something difficulty, some difficulty befell the Prophet ﷺ, he would say, all praise belongs to Allah under all circumstances. So this is the shahid that we continually to pray, we continue to praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So moving on into the first hadith of this chapter, and it's a very short chapter, so we'll be moving right along and we should finish it in the next couple of sittings, bi'idnillah, and hopefully we gain benefit from it, is the first hadith, وعن أبي هريرة رضي الله تلا عنه وعن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أتي الليلة أسرية به بقدحين من خمر ولبن فنظر إليهما فأخذ, اللب فأخذ اللبن فقال جبريل صلى الله عليه وسلم الحمد لله الذي هداك للفطرة لو أخذت الخمرة غوت أمتك رواه مسلم من الحديث تنساه مسلم الحديث بابي هريرة رضي الله تعالى عنه that Abu Hurairah radiallahu ta'ala anhu reported on the night of Al-Isra, the night of ascension. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was presented with two drinking vessels, one full of wine and the other one full of milk. He looked at them, then he took the vessel which was full of milk. Thereupon Jibreel alayhi salatu wa said, Alhamdulillah, all praise belongs to Allah, who has guided you to that, which is in accord with fitrah, meaning Islamic monotheism, tawheed, and, and that which is good. Had you selected wine, your people would have gone astray. From this hadith of the Prophet wasallam, we gain uh, several be uh, benefits that the ulama mentioned. First, that Islam is a religion which matches uh, our human nature and the, pu the, pure, the pure fitra, the pure nature. And that a sensible person will accept that, accept Islam instinctively once they learn and have an understanding of what truly Islam is, not what the people distort and not the bid'ah and the khurafat that some of the people have fallen into. 
But Islam is in accordance with our fitrah. The second benefit derived from this uh, hadith that the ulama mentioned is that uh, that one who is blessed with the capacity to do good, then they should praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and be thankful. Because that means Allah has opened up a door to khair for them, to make dhikr, to show gratitude. So the fact that Allah has blessed you with being a believer in Him subhanahu and that He subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed you with your health, for those who are blessed with their health, then thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala often. And remember, thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a part, uh, one of the ways that we make this dhikr and the one of the ways we praise Allah and one of the ways we show shukr is that we're grateful by our actions. All of those things make up our iman on our tongue, the thicker on our tongue, the, that which is contained in our heart, and that which is contained on our limbs. That's all a part of iman. So by illustrating and making remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and praising Allah with your tongue in your actions by doing righteous deeds, then this is showing obedience to Allah, it's showing gratefulness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and it's a part of iman, and it's a part of guidance and the guidance of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Another benefit of this hadith is it also illustrates the evil contained in alcohol and alcoholism. That although they try to ab abstract that there's some good, as Allah mentions in the Quran, that there may be some benefit, but the harm outweighs the good of it. So even if there could perhaps be some health benefits as they try to say for a glass of wine or a glass of red wine, it has antioxidants, it has this and this and this, whatever, Allah has already mentioned that there may be some benefit in that. But the harm is greater than the benefit. Because obviously, as we look at the way alcohol around the world and throughout history, the harm outweighs whatever health benefits. How many people, more people have died from that? from the, the, the illnesses that are associated with alcoholism and, and having a short life and all the health issues than those people who gained that little bit of benefit. And, and more people have been humiliated from drunkenness and all the ills that, that uh, come from it, whether it be, uh, you know, vomiting, whether it find, finding yourself in a strange toilet where people sit and dispose, akramakum Allah, of their waste and you find your face in there. Whether it be, and, and this is something even I recall from the, my days of Jahiliyyah, that they used to refer, many of the non-Muslims, they used to refer to the hammam, to the bathroom, as the, 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 the toilet itself, as the porcelain god. Look at this. And this is, of course they didn't worship it, but what they meant by this is that a person is so humbled before the porcelain which people sit and urinate and defecate in, akramakum Allah, that they put their face in there. And that porcelain becomes a friend to them. As if it's a friend, as if it is something that they worship, not just a friend, but it's something they confide in, something they, they prostrate for, because over, because that is a source of relief for them. Immediate relief is disposing of the sickness after, the po after they poison themselves with alcohol and, and drugs. So they used to refer to it as the porcelain God, bowing before the porcelain God, subhanAllah. But we bow before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that's what the mu'min is ordered to, to show gratefulness by avoiding that which humiliates you and has harm for you and uh, adhering to that which is good and showing gratefulness. Because it shows ungratefulness when we do disobedience, and may Allah forgive us all of our many, many acts of disobedience. Amin ya Rabbil Alameen. Another benefit of this hadith is it also illustrates the importance of, of just in general, you know, uh, making, uh, praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on your tongue. And that this is the guidance for the servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to goodness. And that a last benefit of this uh, hadith is that the healthy fitra of a person is in accordance with doing righteous deeds, meaning those things Allah Ta'ala wa Yardaha, those deeds which Allah loves 
and is pleased with. And that's what ibadah is. And Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah has a beautiful statement in uh, Mijmu'a Fatawa about what, as a definition of ibadah. He said, Al-ibadatu kullu ma yuhibbuhu Allah wa yardahu min a'mal al-zahir wa batin. Naam. O kama qala Shaykh al-Islam. He said that worship is everything that Allah loves and is pleased with from uh, outward deeds and inward deeds contained in your heart. So those are just some of the benefits of the first hadith and in the next sitting we'll get to the next hadith and we'll move through the bab and may Allah bless us with tawfiq.